Well, it's been a long time since I've done an update. Um, work has not stopped. It has been continuing uh, on a slightly different path than it was previously, but the same work nonetheless. Um, the biggest change, I guess, to announce is that right now the game is taking shape as a two-dimensional uh, as opposed to a three-dimensional. Uh, there's various reasons for it. Uh, you know, I thought about participating in the 2D challenge that Unity had, but in all, I really just decided that uh, I was going to be much more capable of actually uh, completing the game and getting all the features in that I wanted in two dimensions as opposed to three, simply because of the complexity. You know, a three-dimensional world is is massively difficult to populate at the scales that I'm looking at, so you know 2D will give me a, a dry run and the good news is is I'm able to reuse the vast majority of my code that I had developed for 3D put it into 2D and have been able to enhance it and make it better so without further ado um, let's take a quick look at uh, what it looks like at the moment no fancy startup screens we're just gonna run it in the editor uh, for now I've been promising people a video recently and you know I keep wanting to get you know feature X Y or Z in back you know before we uh, before we actually make the video and I finally decided well it's about time to go ahead and do the video so as you can see here two-dimensional uh, these asteroids are SVG vector graphics so we're using the new features of unity to do vectors uh, the, sh the uh, ships themselves are vectors they're stand-in not what we'll eventually go with, I'm sure, but um, but give you a basic idea. So uh, you'll see the the star uh, in the background. That's because we happen to be near the center of the solar system at the moment. So I'll just fly away this direction a little bit, and you'll see that the uh, parallax is in, uh, where the sun moves uh, more slowly because it's in distance than the items that are uh, that are near you. So, uh, let's fly back over here a bit. And we've got uh, a reticle that I can move around with the right stick. I'm flying with the uh, with the PlayStation 4 controller at the moment. And so, if I point to the right, I, I aim right. If I point to the left, it rotates and then thrust to counteract. So whichever, it's like a two-stick shooter in the sense that wherever I press is where my ship wants to thrust to. And it will make the calculations necessary to, to start that thrust. I have a brake, which I'm pressing right now, which allows me to stop the ship. Um, and weapons. We get a few weapons going here. And we've got uh, a heat seeker weapon as well actually hit. That was amazing. That one won't hit, most likely. The uh, target that I'm shooting at is not going to disappear when I, when I break it, but the asteroids will. So I can destroy the asteroids with gunfire and they will drop things um, you know so there's loot to be picked up uh, it's essentially a way to do mining Let's see these things don't have any shields so they go they go down fairly quickly go. so yeah eventually they will actually bust up and I'll have uh, either smaller asteroids to shoot at or there'll be things to pick up in space uh, this little guy right here eventually will have a brain and will try to shoot back at me um, and attack and things like that and take the things that that I wanted you know pretty much act like a human hopefully the um, that process is still in development I'm using uh, deep neural networks to try to build an AI that's capable of flying and avoiding obstacles um, as well as targeting an enemy and uh, and all that stuff so it's going to be interesting uh, that is it is a difficult process it's, there's a lot of trial and error um, 
not difficult technically, but difficult to get the training right and get the behaviors trained that you, that you want, the, the way you want it. Um, you know, you think, oh, maybe this is enough of a, of a reward system for it to learn how to avoid this obstacle, and then you find out that it learned not to avoid the obstacle, but to slow down, you know, in reverse or something like that, and it's not a behavior you want. So, you know, it takes a little while to figure all that out. But that's the basic play of the game at the moment. So we'll hit pause here. And then I'm going to go in and show you uh, the tool that I just finished tonight. Well, I didn't finish. I finished, made it workable t uh, tonight. Um, and that is the uh, map editor. So like I said before, a three-dimensional um, a three-dimensional uh, uh, world is very hard to populate and hard to visualize uh, to build that world. So with 2D I can I can make tools that allow me to visualize things uh, so much more easily. Uh, so I'll just go ahead and start this here. The editor is actually in Unity so I'm using Unity for the editing and this is very still very rudimentary. Um, but we'll go here and we'll notice nothing comes up. So I'm going to go to my region data and we'll close this one here and here in my map editor tool we'll go ahead and load data and here's my solar system uh, so the region we were just playing in is right here uh, around this now these are not these are to scale in distance but not to scale um, si size wise in comparison to the universe there's a large amount of distance between these things they're placed appropriately Basically, the the camera size here uh, is the amount of universe that I want to consume. And uh, when I place an object in here and I place it in an XY position, it translates that into quadrants. Um, I believe that yeah, this is uh, nine uh, quadrants wide and five quadrants tall, uh, with each quadrant being 50,000 units. Um, in the 3D game, I was working with 50 million units per uh, per sector, which was a three-dimensional quadrant. Um, so this is it's much uh, more manageable, smaller in size. It's still going to require that I have some sort of uh, warp uh, system or speed travel system to go from one place to to another. Uh, and then this is just the beginnings. Uh, but we'll show how easy it is to to put something in here. So if I hit create new, it's going to give me a new item. See, so it inserted it down here under the editor objects. And I'm going to jump to a prefab here. Um, well, let's give this thing another sun. Uh, so if I type in sun, and I don't know if it's lowercase or uppercase. But we'll just move this over to the left by one quadrant. So let's see, x minus one, and there's our second sun. So uh, I can I can then move the move the y position, change quadrants. These are my big jumps. Uh, so if I take it to uh, three, oh, well, that's too high, two. Um, and then uh, I can move that over within the quadrant. It's very slow. It's hard to see. But if I jump up by, let's say, 3,000, you know, or 5,000, you can see that it's moving in the scene. 10,000, 100,000, etc. Uh, and so as I make changes here, it uh, it saves this into the map, and uh, I can I can hit save, and all of my changes are saved. Uh, parallax is an interesting thing. Uh, I have a camera system that allows me to do parallax that uh, it's just sort of a, a way of nesting multiple cameras together and they can each see different layers uh, so if I want these objects to exist to, to act with the parallax so the asteroids I was shooting are in the in the terrain layer which is at the closest layer but I have several other layers like the billboard layer uh, I can also place it in mid space um, or even the space layer so by which layer I tell it to go on will determine how slowly in comparison to the ship movement uh, that object is going to move uh, in game. Uh, so that's what it gives me my, my parallax system. So I don't really want to save this guy in there so we're just going to end. But uh, yeah, that's about it. Um, 
if I go back into the uh, space view here, I'll just uh, illustrate what I'm talking about on cameras. So I have uh, a main camera, and this shows the ships um, and anything in the uh, terrain layer. But then I have the mid-space, billboard, and space cameras, which are kind of a mix. The billboard, right now, I'm actually using a perspective camera, uh, while all the rest are orthographic. Um, but that gives me a, a more pronounced parallax um, by using that. It allows me to, to really change the aspect ratio of, of the camera by a lot. So you'll see my field of view is 140 for the billboards. Uh, whereas mid space is orthographic um, and it's at 70 and my main camera is sitting around 44 or 45. Now the that size actually changes because I built a um, a custom um, a custom class called Composition Manager which acts like a group composer for Cinemachine 2D uh, and it looks at all of the objects right now it's culling for objects in the enemy layer and the terrain layer so that's why if you watch the video again you'll see that the, the camera seems to zoom in when there's not much on the screen or zoom out when there's uh, an enemy or or, uh, or an asteroid nearby um, that's what's going on there is that composition manager is actually changing the orthographic size uh, in relation to the targets that are near me so that that probably you know was going to require a little more tweaking in the long run to get it to to feel just right but um, that gives me so you can see if you see here you can see the nested in the top left here that you know brighter white box is the main camera and then all of the other cameras are orthographic or sh I should say these other uh, parallax cameras uh, again in case you're interested parallax uh, or I should say uh, compositing these cameras is fairly simple um, I was telling somebody that it, it works a lot like um, a lot like um, recursion uh, in order to understand recursion first you have to understand recursion um, the same goes for compositing cameras it's really hard to grasp compositing these cameras until you have a need to composite cameras uh, and then not even knowing if you have a need can be difficult sometimes if you haven't done it before so but once once you've done it it makes perfect sense uh, but what you set the the clear flags to depth only um, that's so that it doesn't render anything in between the objects that it sees um, and then uh, you tell it what it what layers it can see via the culling mask um, and then that's it um, set make sure you set it to target display one and all of these will will land. You do have to set the depth for each camera so that you don't have cam you know so that you get the right order. You don't want a background to render last, for example. So and that's the other thing if you will notice my backgrounds um were also had had parallax movement on the stars. Uh that's being done with a nifty little trick that until recently I don't think was possible. Um and that is I have uh We'll open these prefabs. So I have this sprite. Um, this is the fog layer, right? And instead of using a sprite shader and a sprite uh, material, um, my shader is actually using the lightweight render pipeline unlit. Um, the reason for that is that gives me access to the tiling offset for the main texture so I have a script that basically reads the momentum and or velocity of my ship and then moves the offset of the texture accordingly behind the behind the scenes at a different scale than what the actual velocity is so you know moves it slightly slower if it's close and uh, if it's a near layer and moves it really much 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 slower if it's in a far layer so that's why you see the stars in the background there are some that are almost fixed and then there's some stars that will move slightly and um, it's interesting because it gives it almost a, a twinkle so but that's uh, that's where Warpath is right now I hope you enjoyed it and uh, I look forward to putting out some more videos soon